All right, so we're carrying on with uh, getting this thing back into working order. One thing I wanted to do is check the uh, strainer on the uh, hydraulic oil pickup. So this tube here goes down and then over into the hydraulic pump, which is like a PTO drive off the engine. So you need to use some brake cleaner and clean everything off. Clean around the hose fitting. You don't want anything to fall into that hose and run through the pump. So uh, basically I got all that cleaned off. I did take the air filter off as well. So just two bolts holding it on. Then there's a half a dozen bolts holding on this cap. So we'll get this cap loose and uh, we'll take a look at it from there. All right, so things came off uh, quite nicely. I've got the uh, hose clamp loose. Luckily the gasket wasn't super attached. Depending on what you find in here, you might need to uh, pump the oil out of here. So I'm just going to tuck this over to the side and we'll take a, a quick look at what's going on. Because it looks like it's going to be a bit of a trick to get that hose disconnected. Yeah, the oil's not pretty. It's got some humidity in it. And it's low. I think they did the minimum filling that they could. So the tank is in good condition. If it was all rusty in there, that would be uh, more work to do. That's like the oil return. So I'll get that disconnected. And I'll have to come up with some kind of a means to get that oil out. The drain on the tank down there is seized. You should have two drip pans, like one for where the hose disconnects and one to drop the uh, screen onto to work on it. But it's uh, not too big of a deal to do this job. But to get the oil out, like I said, you need to have uh, some kind of means of pumping it out. And you'll need two pails to fill it. It's about a pail and a half to refill this machine. All right, so we got the uh, everything out. You'll need to suck the oil out of that hose a little bit too, I think, just to clean it, just to make sure. And the tank there, we'll get to that in a minute. So it is a, uh, a mesh strainer. I've got some uh, Teflon tape or uh, something that's in the uh, strainer, but it's pretty good condition, so we're gonna clean it out with uh, brake cleaner. And then you can see that the uh, hose went over this pipe by about three inches, so it's a bit of a trick to get it off because it probably hasn't been off in a very long time. So I got this cleaned up. Then I'm going to use uh, a vacuum uh, brake leader to clean out this. I think I can only take out a bit of a gallon at a time. So it's going to be slow. That's what I've got available. So uh, we'll take a look at that in a minute. All right, so let's see if I have enough hands to uh, film this. So this is going to be noisy just by the nature of the beast. So it's a little mighty back, uh, back in the pump here. It should be able to suck this out. All right, so that was pretty hard on the compressor, but we got the, this thing sucked out. I filled out uh, a few containers, and I think it was worth it because uh, when you get to the bottom, there's quite a bit of junk. I cleaned the screen out with a uh, with diesel and a air compressor. 
just with the wand and blew it out. So I'm going to clean this off. There's actually a surprising amount of stuff in the screen after uh, I took a good look at it. So it's uh, worth taking that out and giving it a good clean. I don't know what the cost, but they're free to clean. It's just whatever solvent you're going to use or diesel fuel or whatever. So I'm going to put this back together. There is the return filter, which is just underneath of the floor pan here. And I think the electrical hookup on it is just the ground because it's uh, isolated by rubber hoses on either side and filters can create static. So I think that's uh, just the reason why that they did that. If you're using the machine at a really cold temperature, the oil can create static and uh, that could be hazardous. It needs to be grounded to the machine with oil. So uh, I'll finish cleaning up the tank and then we'll have to order some uh, a return filter and we'll finish this job. Alright, so this is the uh, finished product with the cleaning. I'm really happy with that. I'm really, I'm quite surprised actually that we're able to get it so clean. There's a little fitting here that continues to drip oil from somewhere, but that is okay. It doesn't seem to be a dirty oil. So uh, at this point you could throw a, a pail and a half of oil right in through this hole. But uh, I don't have any oil so I can't do that. So like I said, I'll get the oil, I'll dump a pail or so into the hole here. And then uh, I've got the strainer clean and put back into this so I can drop that back in. And uh, just, I gotta clean the little tube. Like I was expecting the feed for the, uh, hydraulic pump has a bit of crud in it. So I have to reach in there with the screwdriver and try and wipe it out. I don't know what's an acceptable amount or if none is, if it's fatal or what. But I'm going to get it as clean as I can, within reason, and then uh, we'll put this back together. Alright, so things are progressing. I changed the uh, return filter now. So this filter has a bypass built into it, and there's a ground wire that attaches to it as well. So uh, after cleaning the uh, tank out, I put one pail of oil in. I'm still not reading on the dipstick. I was able to get the uh, old filter out. As you can see, there's a uh, just a ground connection on here. You may not be able to see it, but uh, the bypass in this filter was sort of jammed open. So it must be fully loaded with debris, and it's been bypassing for some period of time, which is why there was junk in the bottom of, bottom of the oil tank. So uh should change these... Uh, a bit more often than uh, the previous owner had been. It's just some 10 millimeter uh, nuts to get the uh, clamps off of the lines. Use this, just a flat screwdriver or a pick to uh, loosen the rubber hose here. And then you can pop it off the braided line there. And then there's a little small return hose here as well as hooked on with some clamps. So now at this point I'm gonna get my uh, filter funnel out and I'm gonna probably put a, a quarter of a pail in here. I'm not exactly sure when we're gonna start reading on a dipstick and I don't want to overshoot it because it, it really reads right at the bottom of the dipstick to begin with. So uh, I'm not gonna film that but basically I cleaned the strainer inside the tank and cleaned out the tank previously, changed the return filter. The brand of filter, if I can find it, was Performance Technology Parts. I got this from Helmar. That's the, uh, Helmar uses TCM part numbers, but does not sell OEM parts, which I don't think is a big deal, but uh, just uh, Disclose that if you decide to use them. So I just got this uh, funnel here with a strainer on it. Now I'll put some more oil in here. So I hopefully you found that informative. Thank you for watching.